morning, everybody. And welcome back to Visit Feldcourt. It's Thursday the 16th of November, which of course makes it digger day, if it's a Thursday. And I'm going to start today with my first trick. We're going to go and have a look on the beach because we just had Storm Debbie. So we'll go and see what devastation she's left behind. And we'll go and see what the guys are doing as they work on, work on the beach this morning. And we're going to go and have a look at that big pole. So stick with me. We'll go and see if we can find anything exciting washed up. And don't forget, if you're new in these parts, make sure that you've subscribed. Make sure that you've signed up for your Visit Failed Coast email newsletter. Most of, most of what we find out in a week, we share on there. And as Facebook is getting increasingly less reliable in terms of showing you stuff and actually telling you what's happening, it's a good way to find out what's, what's scurring. So remember to sign up for that. Right, let's go and have a look and see what we can find, shall we? Do you know, I, think, I thought it felt freezing when I came outside and I think, I've, I think I've got myself in a bit of a warm. So this is another one of the poles that's not sure what they're doing, but I'm not walking right down there because it's too early and I'm too out of breath. That's the answer to that question. They're putting the spike on top of the groin marker pole. But that's what you saw on the previous video in this playlist. There's 20 odd videos all about this sea defence project, which I think is quite interesting. You might not agree. Anyway, so they're, they're working down there. They're doing that down there. This is the little path. Oh, I'm going to get knocked down in a minute. There's a digger coming. Let's move, shall we? This is the little path that was built and is used by the dumper trucks when they're busy delivering. And there's right on queue one just arriving here, so we'll watch him. We'll watch him go past. We'll give him a salute, shall we? Um, <clears throat> so all these rocks are to mark out a road in a and a demarcation line. <laughs> and a demarcation line for the dumper trucks as they're delivering and coming round the, the beach. And coming round the beach with their rocks. So they're taking them up there. And this is a, a clearance zone for the Walney offshore cable which comes up to there and runs at an angle through the back of those rocks and through there so there's a there's a limit to to where they can actually drive over the top of it so that's what that's for in case you were wondering right we're going to go that way now we're going to go down there we're going to we're going to go and take a walk i've got my wellies on i'm well prepared and we're going to go and see see the new pole i have to say though i do like these rocks that they've put down the 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 sort of artistic curved ones I think they've really improved the look of the beach. That's just my opinion. If you agree, pop a comment underneath. You're entitled to disagree, so you can tell us that as well. I keep saying, when you're finished, when you're finished, can, can you leave some rocks on the beach? Because the kids are playing on them and they're brilliant for sitting on. Just pat your bottom a minute when you're, when you're wanting a breather or a little bit of a sunbathe. Just on the way past, this is one of the old wooden breakwaters which you'll be familiar with on many coastlines around, around the country. Um, old technology work up to a point. The problem with them, of course, is that they're forever losing boards, they're forever shedding bits, which is great if you want to build a garden bench and you can pick one up. Um, but it doesn't really do a lot to keep the beach in position, which is why today they use rocks to dissipate the energy of the beach and to collect to collect um, sand. Now I'm just up in here, that might look to you like just a blob of seaweed that's washed up. And there's actually loads of little turnstones ferreting about in it looking for the breakfast. I don't know whether you can see them moving as I just pan in a bit. There's so, there's a few right in the centre of the screen. They're so well camouflaged you can hardly see them. But this is, this is their, this is their breakfast. The tag goes out and it leaves all the little bugs and invertebrates and little sea creatures behind. So they come along and, and pick all them up for their breakfast. I don't know whether you can tell um, because it's, you don't get that 3D effect when you're looking at a, at a screen, but this, the sand looks quite like a, a Star Warsian landscape this morning. 
it's all of an up and down. You can tell that we've had a bad storm and it's been really rough. The, the waves have kind of picked the sand up and shifted it. So these dark patches are in, in, in inundations, indentations. And the high bits are where it's scooped away, but it's, it's like the surface of the moon. And there's loads of little puddles as well, look. This bird has caught his breakfast. Look, he's got what looks like a big wormy clammy thing. I don't know what it is. But it's his and he's keeping it. And here we are. Here's the pole. The pole that was put in last week. So this, when it was laid flat on that lorry, is 18 metres long. And I've rung... <laughs> I rung the set office this morning and I said, excuse me, could you tell me please how much of this pole is sticking above the, above the beach? At which point she cracked out laughing and said, ooh, exactly, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Because the way that they're installed is that two thirds of it is underneath the beach. So if you can imagine that much, there's twice as much again being knocked into the beach. So it's not going to move anytime soon. And a third of it above. So out of an 18 metre pole, there's about 12, me 12 metres under the beach, which is about 40 foot in old money. And there's about a third of it stuck up, which is about six metres, which is roughly 20 foot. So if I go and stand here against it, you can see, you can see how wide it is. It's probably about as wide as my shoulders. I'm not going to stand in that big puddle of water because it's quite deep. It's probably about as wide as my shoulders and it's very deep, very deep. And this week when Storm Debbie was in full attendance, the waves were going over the top of that. Just imagine being underneath all that, all that depth of water. It's enough to frighten you to death, isn't it? So this pile of rocks is the, the base that was installed a week or so before for the piling rig to stand on and, and the heavy machinery. So the rig stood on that and then it vibrated the pole into place. And I think, don't quote me, but I'm fairly sure that he said that when they've done all the works and finished, this stone comes out. Fairly sure, fairly sure. These rocks up here are all plonked. They are stored, they are stored very neatly, I must say, we will go and have a look. Actually, they're not as neat as a groin when you get up to them. They look like a groin from a distance. <laughs> you can see they've all got weights written on them, so 3.96 tonnes for that one, and 8.77 for that one. The pinky coloured ones are sharp, Sharp granite, sharp pink, um, and the grey coloured ones are limestone. So you can see, you can see the rough mix of which which is which rock, and they're both of a similar hardness. So oh, I'm not sure what that's supposed to say. It said something 0.31, but I think the way it's not worn off. They have a similar hardness of the limestone. Is that the top end of hardness of limestone and the granite is at the bottom end of hardness of the granite and they need to be roughly the same the same hardness so that you don't get uneven wear and when you look you can see that they're not actually a groin when you get near up to it but from a distance to be fair they do look like the finished thing they're not they're just rock stores and I'm just going to walk around this great big puddle I came around the top way because it's all muddy that horrible deep thick mud but you can see how the reduction in turbulence in the water has prevented this little bit of beach in between here from eroding and washing away like all the other stuff's done in all that bad weather i'm going to go for a walk up there and we'll go and see what they're doing and get some video while it's not blowing the gale raining obviously you need to keep off this road when there's a big when there's a big digger coming Apparently they don't just um, squash your leg. If they run over you, they blow your body up. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, should I?
<coughs> apparently it squeezes all the blood up towards all your internal organs and your heart and then you go pop. So that's the bit that kills you. Anyway, it's a lot easier walking on this than it is walking on the pebbles. Um, just make sure that you keep away from any of the heavy plant and machinery. I only came out to look at the pole and ended up walking <laughs> all the way around the beach. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm boiling. Frozen when I came out. It looks like they're taking the old groin out here. So I'm going to go and ask these guys exactly what's occurring and then I'll explain. So they're using this week to get these old groins out now that the rock piles are in place because this is a really bad tide week and because of the way that the tides drop they've not got a lot of time to do a lot of work. So you can see them taking all the bits out and then they're putting them, I think that's a pile of metal that's going that away so they'll be sent off for recycling. Or is it wood? Can't tell. Anyway, that's going for recycling and all the bits of growing board and all the rubbish and everything are going in the back of the dumper truck which will go back to the compound and when they've got a full load that will go for recycling because everything is reused. And then next week when the tides improve they'll get back to actually building rock groins up here and they're cracking on it to pace and, and, and doing quite well. This is my rocket scientist cab operator. I called him a, a rocket scientist because they're using all the computer equipment in the cab and his wife thought it was hilarious. <laughs> right, we're gonna go for a we're gonna go for a, a walk via the top of the beach back to So this is where the tow protection started, you remember, up here at the at the tank traps area where the water outfall is. These bits here still more or less buried. But just look how Storm Debbie has chopped the sand away that had been had been put in and, and backfilled um, but there's still some of it there there's still some of it there and that's how that's how did you used to watch that when you were young I used to love watching how that's how the groins and the top protection work they keep the beach material near the wall and protect it from overtopping and flooding and erosion. Oh, look at the lovely brand new clean wall. What a mess. This is all the foam that's washed up this week, yesterday. In fact, there's still a bit there, look. That's not quite collapsed yet. And it's decaying algae in the water that makes a, a sort of a thicker thicker consistency that holds the bubbles and that's where you get all those bubbles and that's what all this mucks from what a mess this little bit is still closed off just now because the council are going to put the benches back in anytime now I guess they might have been doing it this week but uh, best late plans and all that so as soon as the benches are back in place the promenade will be open again oh goodness gracious me well it looked nice for five minutes it's a shame it's a shame it didn't get open this must be last night's fluff from high tide during the night what a mess doesn't make you cry you know And back to the pole, it looks tiny from up here. I'm standing on the footpath at the minute. So that will mark the end of the rock groin and rocks will join the gap up between it and the crossover ramp, which is the piece of concrete that's in centre shot at the minute. The rocks will come all the way in a straight line towards us and join up with these rocks right here which will then stabilise the beach and hold everything together and, and stop it all from moving about as much. You can see how quite a lot of this sand is washed out from the tow protection. And when all the groins are in place and everything's finished, you will see that this stabilises and the sand level comes up and all these rocks start to, start to disappear. And I would presume 
I'm fairly sure I've heard them saying that they were going to do some beach recharge and reprofile it when, when they're finished, if it needs it. So anyway, a look at a, a, look at a six metre pole turned into a bit of a, a bit of a exploration, didn't it? So I hope you've enjoyed that. And don't forget, make sure that you've remembered to subscribe. Remember to sign up for your Visit File Coast email newsletter. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye for now.